Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Central Virginia Fishing Report with Ethan Martin of Tail Tellers Fly Shop. How you doing this afternoon, Ethan? I'm doing great today. How are you doing? As always, just trying to stay out of trouble. You, uh, I know you guys have gotten a fair amount of rain, didn't exactly get touched by the, uh, the hurricane that ran up the coast, but uh, what's it looking like on the trout and the smallie front in your neck of the woods? It's not as crazy. I, I really thought it was going to get bad. Um, but like you said, it just kind of nixed us. And, and so we got water, but it wasn't enough to make stuff really unfishable. Uh, it was a good help for the little small mountain streams, gave them some water. And then uh, the James is, it looks a little bit off color, but I'm sure by the weekend it's going to be fine. It'll probably actually help things kind of get stuff cooled down and a little bit of a reset. But it, it honestly wasn't as much water as what I was expecting it to be uh, at the at the front of this thing. Yeah, and I imagine too, it looks like, you know, you're lucky because you've kind of, it's kind of knocked the heat back a little bit. So you're kind of in the low upper 80s, low 90s for the next week to 10 days. So I imagine... Uh, a shot of water and cooler temperatures has probably reignited your trout bite just a little bit. Yeah, it has in the, in the mountain streams. Um, I mean, the cool thing is, is in those mountains, especially, you know, well, it'd be west of us, which is all the mountains, but um, it, it's a lot cooler as it is already. Cause you're already in these little valleys and, and that sort of thing, ridges on the mountains. Um, so it's already a little bit colder. So when you're expecting it to be, you know, let's say 90 degrees here in downtown. Well, 20 minutes out to the mountains, it's going to be, it could be up to 15 degrees colder in some of those little things. Um, I mean, I was driving through a little valley the other day and, uh, it was like 74 degrees and we were up in the mountains fishing. And then, uh, as we came out and then got towards uh, big Island, it was like the temperature had gone up a good, a good bit. I mean, it was like upper eighties, but just that little bit of, uh, not necessarily an altitude change, I would say, but like when an, all of the streams are going to be kind of hidden because they're in the valley uh, of the mountains. So it's a, uh, it should be fishing really well. Uh, terrestrials, that sort of thing is what people have been catching them on. Um, beetles and ants, that sort of stuff. And then if they're not hitting that, I would throw like a smaller mayfly pattern or caddis pattern, something like that. I mean, and they're really not too picky this time of year because there's so many bugs that that plop down on them. It's really just size that I adjust. Um, and then I'm lazy. So I like the pattern to float a really long time. So that, that's the main thing. So I, I, I like foam patterns because of that. Um, and if that's not working, then I'll switch over to, like I said, a smaller mayfly or a smaller caddis, something like that. Size 16 is probably the smallest I'll ever go. Um, just because that's, <laughs> that's what I like to do. So that's what I'd tell you to do too. Yeah, and so, you know, get a little bit of a break, but you know, folks, you really, this time of year, owe it to yourself to take your thermometer with you, and, you know, if you temp the water out, and it's, say, 67, 68 degrees, it's probably time to go chase bluegill or smallmouth. Yeah, for sure, and that that's what, really, I've been doing a lot more of, is the smallmouth stuff, and it had kind of, it had slowed down a lot with all the heat that we had gotten, um, but then this past Sunday, when all those fronts came through, I was out with, uh, Matt Miles, who's the, one of our local guides here. And, uh, it, it was a pretty good day. I mean, it started off, we got in the water like two or something like that. Um, and then we had all those weird fronts that came through and it never rained on us. Um, but yeah, we, we caught some pretty nice fish and, uh, I mean, it had the, the smallmouth from moving around and, uh, we saw some real big fish. I think we caught two, like 17 or 18 inch fish. Um, which is not just a, a story, you know, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I mean, and then that evening, uh, frog bite is, it's pretty good right now. So if you have never tried that, it's definitely, uh, worth your time. Um, I, I really enjoy it anyway, <laughs> watching these fish come up off the bottom and just annihilate uh, a frog is pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. And that's probably, well, I know it's a little bit more active than, you know, doing what we would treat traditionally do and throw a popper out there and letting it kind of yep. stay still and maybe twitching it a little bit um yep. 
you know, anything, I guess, one on the kind of the frog technique in terms of like how you fish them, but also kind of how that fits into kind of a normal smallie day these days. Are you all top water or are you having to kind of go deep every now and again when it either gets really, really hot or, uh, or something like that? Uh, yeah. So the frog thing is one, I mean, you, you got to devote yourself to it because it's not something that's going to work 100% all the time on our rivers, on the James uh, or the other surrounding rivers that make the James. Um, so it's something that, you know, I, if it's midday, I'm probably going to be either throwing something deep in, or I'm going to be throwing just a traditional popper along the shade line. Um, when it's evening, that's when I typically throw a frog. Um, uh, main reason is because when you sit there and listen, when you start hearing like the bullfrogs, that sort of stuff sound off, it's typically either, you know, in the morning or in the evening. Um, so that's what I do. And then the other thing is, is, the pattern of frog that you get is going to either help or hurt you. And then, uh, there's a couple of things to like, it's not typically, this isn't large mouth fishing, you know, where like you throw out this enormous thing, you just chug at it like crazy and then let it sit there. Uh, like the ones that we've done good on, is just like the umqua swim frog, uh, swimming frog and, and the smaller sizes typically for small mouth. Um, and it's not like, like I said, it's not these two to three foot long, huge strips that have been doing it. It's more just like this sort of subtle, I guess, chug, you know, air quotes is the best way to say it. Um, and then, I mean, it, I also just put out a, a blog, uh, post on our website on sort of popper styles of fishing. Um, so you can always just go to South Dallas VA and then look for a little bit more in depth on that. And that's just kind of the entirety of popper fishing with like how you fish a, a frog style pattern. And then just like your traditional chartreuse, boogle bug, you know, like w what you said, where it's cast out, let it sit or twitch it. Um, so when it comes to the frogs, it's, uh, it's not something that's going to work all the time, but when you've caught a bunch of fish throughout the day, or, you know, you've caught enough for yourself and you want to do something a little bit different, it is a, it's a really cool way to, to watch a fish eat because most of the times it's pretty, it's uh, entertaining. I'll say it that way. Like they, they obliterate it. And, and I mean, we've caught even like on a size six frog. I mean, I've caught some pretty big uh, bluegill as well. So it's not just the small math game. Um, you know, you can catch whatever on it. Cause, but I mean, whatever eats a frog is going to eat your fly. That is a frog. So Pretty much anything in the water, if it sees a bullfrog or any type of little frog cruising around, you know, that's a, they can catch it. It's a pretty good meal. Yeah. Game over, as we like to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I guess with, like what you were saying on, with the popper fishing, I mean, it's definitely, it's a noticeable uptick in how many fish are eating poppers um, as opposed to just dredging the bottom. Um, so if, you know, Say you start on your float in the morning, uh, I would definitely be putting the popper on. Um, or it, So the other thing that you can do if you are sort of planning a float trip is focus on that afternoon stretch of the day. So, you know, rather than going at first light, you know, getting up at four and getting to the boat ramp at, uh, you know, five or six or whatever, uh, if you kind of time it to where you're going to be getting off at dark, as long as you are somewhat familiar with where the boat ramp should be, don't, you know, do something stupid. Um, but if you, yeah, if you are able to time it to where you're floating that evening stretch, you'll actually avoid a lot of the kayakers or tubers. Um, cause most of those people are going to put on a tent. They'll be off at, well, whenever they get off. So it could be five, six that they get off. So, you'll typically avoid a lot of those people that want to get out at first light. And then you're able to fish that evening time where fish are still really active because the, the annoying part is if you put on in the morning and it's like two o'clock or even sometimes it's like one o'clock where the fishing just kind of shuts down on the surface. You know, you might catch a fish here or there, um, especially on the James. Cause like, I mean, the James the past couple of years has just proven itself to be, it's a, a big fish fishery. It's not high numbers. Um, so when you want to catch the most possible, you've got to time it around, you know, that morning or evening stretch. Cause that's when they're going to be most active, all, all fish. 
Yeah, got it. And we've got a question from Dave, Ethan, and he wanted to know what your uh, your go to smallmouth setup was in terms of your favorite rod, uh, your favorite line, and your favorite leader. Yeah, so my favorite line, I'll just start there because that one's like super easy. The scientific angler bass bug line has been my favorite bass bug line. <laughs> uh, comes in the name. I mean, it's it's hard for me to want to try something else. Honestly, I, I've tried a couple of different um, ones. Like if I'm if I've got to make these really long casts, then they make a like an amplitude tropical taper um, that does really good with getting good distances or even like the MPX sound dive gangers on, but like for an all around your generic fisherman, um, for bass, the bass bug line, I I've not fished a line that comes close to, uh, what you get for the price. Um, so that, that would be my favorite line. If I had a, a reel, you know, in smallmouth fishing is, it can be important. I mean, I wouldn't go with something that's cheap. Um, just because, you never know when you're going to catch that 21 inch fish that's going to put you on the reel real quick. Um, so like, I mean, I use Nautilus reels, um, just cause I like them a lot. Uh, they're super lightweight. You can hold a lot of line and I own a fly shop so I can have a lot of that gear. <laughs> yeah. I was just getting ready to say it's cause you own a fly shop. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, and then on the, on the rod side of things, I mean, there's a couple different rods that I use that I really like my favorite. I mean, again, because I own a fly shop. My absolute favorite one has been the Thomas & Thomas uh, Exocet SS200. That's a lot of words, but what it is is it's a, a little bit shorter rod that's designed to throw a 200-grain line. Um, and it was really, it's, it's for the streamer rod, is, was the premise of why they created it. Uh, but you can throw bass flies, like big poppers, that sort of stuff, super easy. And... I, so I like that is to me the premier, my favorite all around uh, bass rod. Um, if I had to pick a second one, I do like I've got one um, the Axiom Two X in uh, a seven weight is that's kind of my the second rod I always bring on the boat, um, and that's you know my dad fishes that when he's in the water with me, and um, it's a really accurate rod. It's easy to cast with. With that bass bug line, you know, you match it, uh, the seven weight line to seven weight rod, and uh, you can, it, it's a really accurate stick. So uh, if you're not trying to spend the money, if you don't want like the top of the line stuff, then that will be probably where I would point you to next would be the, the Axiom 2X and a seven weight. Um, there, I know some guys that use an eight weight. I know some guys that use a six weight, uh, like Matt Miles. Um, he, he'll use a six weight a lot of times for clients. It's helpful to get clients to, to cast. Um, the 200 grain Exocet is a little bit similar to, or it's basically a six weight. Um, but if I'm using an actual like rod weight, you know, the, the normal class system, um, then I would pick a seven. It's just all around. If I had one to choose, um, that's what I'd go with. Cause I mean, there's some big fish in the James. Uh, and the last thing that you want is to be, like I said, hooked up to some big fish or some stupid flathead that eats your fly and you've got to figure out what the heck to do with the thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's where I stick to stuff. Um, and then on the leader side of things, I, to start and probably 80% of the time I'm using an eight foot bass leader, um, either from scientific anglers or um, I started making one that I like that too. Um, just a stiffer leader. That's the main thing. Um, as the, the water clarity increases, then, uh, I'll typically, and the rivers go down, I'll typically make that leader a little bit longer. Um, even this, this past Sunday, actually I was using a 12 foot leader and that's not uncommon, um, for how I like to fish. Cause it keeps your fly line really far away from the bug that's popping down. So it just ensures that you're not going to spook stuff. Um, and again, that's something that if somebody wants more. I guess nerdy info on bass leaders. That's another blog post that we did. Uh, might've been two or three weeks ago now, but that's, that's on our website too. You can just Google search it bass leaders. Um, and there's sort of a rundown of different ways to rig up a bass leader. Um, but like I said, if I, if you want the easy answer, eight foot is what you're going to be looking at. And then I like them to be in that 
12 pound range um, and up, you know, somewhere in that, but 12, 12 is the most common. 12 pound, eight foot bass leader is going to be the most common that I use. Yeah, well, there you go. And, you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. If you'll send us a question, you can email them to us. You can send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. If we use your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag, and we will enter you into a drawing for something cool from the shop at the end of the season. Uh, Before I let you hop, Ethan, why don't you let folks know where they can find you, your hours, and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, so you can find us at uh, downtown Lynchburg. We're on... Commerce Street, 920 Commerce Street in downtown. Uh, we're about a block away from the James River. You can come here. You can come to the shop. Uh, most normal summer days, you can even wait the James in downtown. Um, and then if you're looking, you're farther away, then you can always find us online at tailtellersva.com or Instagram, which is also tailtellersva um, or Facebook. So a lot of different ways. You know, you can call, you can email. I'm pretty much the one that's... Uh, that's going to answer anything. Uh, we're open, you know, Monday through Saturday. Uh, so, like I said, a lot of different ways. There's uh, no excuse if you've got a question about something. I'm not a very, I guess, intimidating guy. So, um, you can shoot your questions away, and uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Well, there you go. Well, listen, folks, take advantage of this kind of brief reprieve in the heat to get out there and uh, chase some trout or some smallmouth. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Ethan. Tight lines.